Hi there. How are you today? God bless you. Today, by God's grace and by the help of the Holy Spirit, what we are going to be looking at is can Christians have demons? Praise the Lord. Can Christians have demons? By God's grace, the Lord is going to take us uh, and help us to understand this um, fundamental. It's, it's one of the uh, controversial issue in Christianity today, which ought not to be, but it's sad. You know, the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So many Christians are unaware of the truth and the fact that we are in a spiritual warfare. Amen. The whole world, the Bible says, is under the uh, power of Satan. Wickedness. There's so much wickedness through the power of Satan. But we don't need to be afraid. This is not to give any credit to the devil. No. But we should not be ignorant of his devices. Praise the Lord. We, are, we need to know our enemies in, and know who we are in Christ. Christ has given us power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power, power, powers of the enemies. And he has promised that nothing shall by enemies hurt us. Praise the Lord. So we should know that we have victory in Christ Jesus. So if he, I used to think that, um, you know, there's nothing like demons. It's just superstitious. There's nothing like witchcraft. There's nothing like, you know, I, I was so ignorant of spiritual warfare until God began to you know, deal with me and reveal some issues in my life. Praise the Lord. So, if we say there's no uh, demonic um, issues or that Christians can, cannot have demons, why are so many Christians today not living an abundant life in Christ Jesus? This is a reality. We might say, oh, it's just one of those things in, in life. No, Christ has come to give us abundant life. So we see that some Christians are going through strange diseases, suicide, divorce, addiction, delays in their lives, depression, strange melt mental illnesses. And you know, we wonder why mysterious death and even strange occurrences, mysterious occurrences in family pattern and you know, bad things happening to Christians. Yes, we live in a sinful world, but once you come to Christ, Christ has promised us abundant life, abundant life in him. Yes, we might have tribulations, we might have challenges. He has given us all the weapons we need in him through the power of the cross, through the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to fight the good fight of faith. Praise the Lord. Our fight is a good one. But if we don't know how to use the weapon, if you don't know how to attack your enemy, if you don't even believe that you have enemy, so where do you stand? You're bound to lose the battle. That is just it. You're going to lose the battle. Praise the Lord. So we need to wake up to this truth that there is spiritual warfare. In Ephesians, the Bible helps us to know that our we uh, weapon of our, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And He also t told us that uh, our warfare is not carnal; it's not with flesh and blood, but with spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, with principalities and powers. This is the scripture. If the scripture is telling us that you know, we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against ritual wickedness in high places, so we should believe the word of God. Praise the Lord. So I pray the Lord God will guide us to his truth and help us to be able to fight a good fight of faith. 
praise the Lord. And for example, uh, Peter's mother-in-law, the Lord Jesus cast, cast out um, spirit of fever from her. So that shows us that um, a Christian can be demonized, can be possessed with a demons. Praise the Lord. And also the daughter of Abraham in Luke 13, 1 to 16, who was burned, who was burned by Satan for 18 years. Praise the Lord. But Jesus set her free. Jesus called her daughter of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what are demons? And where do they live? Praise the Lord. What are demons? These are Satan's angels, Satan's fallen angels, spirits. They are unclean spirit. The Bible also referred to them as unclean spirit. Let's look at Luke eleven twenty four. 24. Amen. It says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirit more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first see praise the lord the the demons they live in human being most most of the time you know they are invisible spirit they are unclean spirit, wicked spirit. They love to dwell in human bodies. Yes, some yes they do. They dwell in animals too, and trees and other um, you know uh, bodies. But mainly they love to dwell in human bodies. That is to show us how passionate the devil hates human beings. So those wicked spirits, they just like to destroy um, men. And that's their mission. Their mission is to kill, to steal, and to destroy life. Um, um, blessings of, of man. To destroy the joy, the righteousness in man, the godliness in man, the peace of man. Is, that is just the work of the devil. And the spirit, all this monitoring wicked spirit, demonic spirit, they monitor the works of the flesh. So anybody that is working, that is living in sin, yes, sin is their main gate into man's life. Since men sin, uh, have, have sinned in the Garden of Eden, this demonic entity have opened door to the life of human being to oppress them to to manipulate them to afflict them in any and every way praise the lord but praise the lord when jesus came the bible say he destroyed the principalities and powers he destroyed the devil on the, on his death and resurrection praise the lord through the blood of of of, of the lamb we have the victory Hallelujah. So, um, these demons, they have characteristics. Yes. So, what are the characteristics of these demons? These demons, they have names. Just like Jesus was casting a demon from the um, man of gathering, Jesus was asking, hey, what is your name? He said, Legion. Many. There are many. So, they have names. Mm -hmm. They speak. They are intelligent. Yeah. They eat blood and flesh. That is it. They grow with their host. Like Jesus was asking the man whose son was afflicted. That how, how long has this son been demonized? You know, And he said from childhood. So they grow. Demon can grow in people. Yes, they grow with their host and they are transferable from one generation to the other unless that person is delivered. Hallelujah. Praise to the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the power in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the power of the, uh, the cross. Jesus has given us power and authority. 
Praise the Lord. So in uh, Luke 9, 1 to 2, Jesus says, Go out and preach the gospel. I give you power and authority to cast out demons. See, Jesus said he has given us power and authority to cast out demons and to heal all kind of diseases. Praise the Lord. So why did Jesus have to give us that power and authority? Hallelujah. It's because only Christians can cast out the devil in Jesus' name. It is only in the name of Jesus that the devil can be cast out. Praise the Lord. Some um, bad people too, you know, false prophet, evil people, they try to cast out demons, it's, but it's a lie. It's all manipulation. It's all deception. They want to cast out one, then they will, they, uh, like seven will come back, just like we read in Luke 11, 24. When it, one demon is cast out, it will come back. And be looking if that place is empty. So if a uh, false prophet or those evil people are using uh, the devil's power to cast out devil, it's just a lie. They are just deceiving. No man can cast out demon except in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And thank God, if you are a child of God, you have the power and authority in the name of Jesus Praise the Lord. And let's look at the example even in Acts 19, 14, 15. Remember the seven sons of Sceva. You can read that, read that when you have time. Acts chapter 19, verse 14 to 15. The seven sons of Sceva, they tried to cast out demon, just like Paul. So they said, in, in the name of Jesus Christ, one Paul, you know, calls. I, we cast you out. And that man, that man was like, okay, Jesus I know, Paul I know, <laughs> who are you guys? He dealt with this, just one man. He dealt with the seven sons of Sceva. They ran out naked. So no man, no man dare to cast out demons. It's only children of God. And it's only in the name of Jesus that demons can be completely cast out and people can be delivered. Amen. And also another thing, the second thing I also want us to note is that it is only those who are Christian that can be delivered completely from the devil. Yes, it is only Christians who know God. If you are a child of God and you are delivered, you continue to grow in the word of God, the demons will never be able to come back. But if an unbeliever is set free, hmm, the, those demons will come back in manifold years, just like we read. And you know, the worst, um, the, the last part of that person's life will be worse than the beginning. And that's why Jesus always... Um, he will always tell people that he delivered that they should go and sin no more. It is only sin that can bring demons back into a believer's life and which we need to uh, avoid. If you are a child of God, what are you doing with sin? You need to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus all the time. Keep watch, keep praying, keep uh, studying the scripture in obedience and following the Lord and be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And also, if you cast out the devils, you know, just like I've explained, as a child of God, you need to cover yourself. Put on the whole hammer of God when you're casting out demons. Yes. And make sure there's no sin in your life. Make sure there's no sin in your life. Because if there's sin in a Christian life and you're casting out demons, you are endangering yourself because those demons, they will come back and jump on you. <laughs> Except, you know, God just show mercy on you and you cry unto him. Praise the Lord. And, you know, deliverance ministry is not just for a baby Christian. And that's why it's so important that we allow Christians to grow as in their faith 
as they study the scripture, meditate upon the scripture, so that by the time they are delivered of whatever demons in their life, they will able, they will be grounded in the word of God. They will be taught how to follow Jesus Christ, how to sustain their deliverance, how to maintain their deliverance. Praise the Lord. In Obadiah um, chapter 117, the Bible says, On Man Zion there shall be deliverance in holiness, and the people of God shall possess their possession. Hallelujah. So it is only the Christians that can be delivered totally and they will be able to live a holy life, a righteous life and worship God, you know, in, in, in peace, in joy, in righteousness. And they will possess their possession. They'll be able to live abundant life in Christ Jesus. They'll be able to live a life that is free from oppression and um, manipulation of the devil. Praise the Lord. So I pray the Lord will guide us and continue to keep us strong. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. God bless you. Thank you.